Let it roll in Phoenix. We're here for the title matches of today's JBT Tournament of All-Time Champions. Two Mojave Conference bowlers going at it for the title here. This is Pamela Wright. She doesn't have a win. She's in this because this is actually the Tournament of Champions as almost champions. Anybody who's ever finished second or first is Kim Bowl in this tournament. Pamela going to become one of only a few bowlers to win their first title in the TOC as a result of that. She's the top seed and she's got a 19 pin handicap cushion against Brendan Lindsay who's climbed the ladder to this point. And that's going to be a nice spare for Pam right down the right side at that 10 pin. That's her fourth consecutive spare after a first frame open. However, Brendan Lindsay, who you guys have seen a lot of on our webcast in the Mojave Conference, opened with three in a row to more, and make, more than make up that handicap difference. He leads on the scoreboard by 34 pins, again giving 19, so he's up 15 overall already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We saw the Lamb sisters yesterday down in the Invitational where it just seems like they know how to win and Brendan seems to have that same gene in him where uh, his most memorable thing this season was that miracle victory down in uh, Pahrump where he's from where he switched balls for still I think absolutely no reason in the 10th frame and <laughs> struck out to win the tournament. It's kind of become his trademark to do a random ball change. He doesn't need to right now because this ball looks perfect. Nice job breaking up the split there. He can spare it up and remain clean and remain well in the lead. Over in the scratch division, it's Mark Myers and Cameron Smith going at it in the semifinal match. Star-studded scratch step ladder as it was Myers, Dempsey, Smith, and King. Doesn't get much better than that. And that's a nice job at the 4-7. Talk about those uh, dark horse candidates to win the Touring Players Championship. Brendan's been in that conversation because he's had such a hot spring. He's obviously working hard on his game and improving constantly. That is a great way to come into a handicap tournament. Pamela with the lower average, just 121, so she's just trying to fill frames. She's done that very nicely. Ms. Myers opened in the 10th over there for 193. That's a terrible open for Myers, as, as Cameron now needs only 18 to win instead of a double to win. Ah, real nice grab at the spare. Pamela's got to be happy with her game right now, but even so, she still trails in the match because Brendan started so hot. Grab a shot at Cameron here. He needs to mark and get eight. If he gets six on this ball, he loses. Funny looking six right there, huh? So it'll be Smith versus King. What a TUC title match coming up in scratch. And we got a good one here in handicap as well. Pamela bowled all nine of her games in the first two rounds over that 121 average with a high game of 170. And a very demanding WCBA Stockholm pattern. Led to fairly low scores. She led the tournament at plus 143, took a score of minus 22 to make the cut today. So it's the top 40% in the TSU, the handicap division. Family, another easy single pin spare, but she's going to miss that one to the right. Not how she wanted that shot, and she's leaving. <laughs> Don't blame her. There she goes. So, another opening for Lindsay. Not the only Lindsay in the title in the stepladder today is Lindsay Alport. Played Brendan Lindsay in the first round for the all Lindsay matchup. Brendan won that, obviously. Then defeated Sam Amaral, who had a real nice weekend in the semifinals to get here to the title match. Another simple single pin spare and. Just a walk in the park for Brendan Lindsay. Yep, yep, yep. I'll just throw a clean 210 so far through seven frames. Just another title match. Oh, hum. Look at that silver ball combo, too. Silver's. Oh, that dark ball. Oh, hum. Another well timed Brooklyn. guy was jumping out of his skin in the first couple matches. Now he's just kind of strolling back to his chair, having a seat. Yep, I got this. Pamela has to get it going here. And she does. There you go. Nice shot, Pam. 
Stays live in the match there. He's still going on a 160 pace, so well above average. Unless that, uh, that opponent there sitting down is uh, even above her his average. It's the technical announcer speak term. You can uh, look that up later. Right at the head pin. Oh. Would have loved to have that one and have that double working going into the 10th. Now must have the spare. Pam from Kingman had her second place finish at Samstown this year to qualify for the tournament. Nice job at the spare though. There you go. Win or lose, it's been a fine game from Wright. But if it's going to be win, it's going to be because this guy makes some mistakes and I have not yet seen him make a mistake in the late stages of a stepladder match. You gotta have him beat by the eight. It's like uh, playing the Yankees with Rivera or something. Unless you're the D-backs in 01. <laughs> Even when he misses, he's leaving himself easy spares to make. Just uh, nothing bad to say. All kinds of momentum now heading into the TPC with the uh, invitational win and possibly a TPC win. So that'll be two majors in two months for the Perumpian. Hang on. Hold it. All right. At the silver blue dot type ball isn't going anywhere, even on the fairly short dry pattern here. Uh, Pam getting those 19 pins, so put her 147 through eight. Brendan just needs to keep it on the lane here. And barely does keep it on the lane. <laughs> Learning about five boards further right than any of his other shots. It was a very short but very flat pattern, so uh, even short patterns can have out of bounds. He almost hit it there. That would have been weird if he guttered it. Would have been very Brendan Lindsay if he had guttered it. He just likes to make these things interesting, but not this time. It's a, it's a walkover. 204 there. The best uh, Pamela can do is 178 plus pins won't be enough. Brendan Lindsay has just won his second major title on tour in the last couple of months. How about that? What you got to say? Go back there and get your shirt in there. See yeah. If send you anything free. <laughs> That's right. These guys aren't our sponsor, but they do a lot of local sponsoring. So, please. Can't say their name because they're not Ebonite, but he's very happy with them right now. So is his pop. So it makes it a lot shorter drive back home when you got a championship plaque in your pocket. $300 scholarship for the win, so big bucks as well. A fine game from Pam, too. She'll be in the 160s scratch. That's excellent from her. That's two pins shy with the spare of her high game all day. So can't fault her. Just a good and gooder. All right, 166 scratch. Good job from both bowlers. We'll be back with Scratch Division. King versus Smith. You don't want to miss it.